All right, so in this video, we're going to go over uh, one of these pretty important equations in uh, electrochemistry, which is called the randall sefcik equation. And uh, what this equation tells you is the relationship between the peak current of a reversible redox couple. Okay, so a classic example is like ferrocene, ferrocenium. Um, and, you know, I'll talk about in another video what reversible means. Reversible in electrochemistry has a specific meaning it's related to not just um, whether or not the reaction can go backwards and forward, but that it can do so with a certain rate, okay, a certain rate constant. Basically, a fast, fast rate constant, relatively fast rate constant. So ferrocene can interconvert between uh, ferrocenium and uh, the plus form cation and the neutral form very rapidly. So and it does so completely. So uh, it's a reversible process. So here's the equation. It just basically describes the peak current. Um, this could be the anodic peak current or the cathodic peak current. Um, and so it could be a negative or a positive value. And it, it does so in terms of um, a bunch of constants, right? Temperature, number of electrons transferred, Faraday's constant, uh, area of electrode, um, but then the important one is concentration of, of the species that's in solution. So of your redox active species, so like of your ferrocene. Uh, and also the diffusion coefficient, okay, and your scan rate. And so um, depending upon, you know, what information you're trying to get, maybe you'll know um, all these variables, but you can solve for the diffusion coefficient or you could dissolve for the concentration. Um, it could be useful. Typically, usually where this is used is um, in relation to the scan rate. So um, that's this new here. It's not a V, right? It's new, the Greek letter. And I uh, wanted to call out that it has this uh, square root term here. Anytime in electrochemistry, or most times in electrochemistry, when you see this square root term, um, this is telling you it has something to do with diffusion. And this, this comes from um, Fick's law of, of diffusion where you do this derivation um, and you end up getting this square root, okay? Um, and so basically you can see that as you increase the scan rate, okay, your peak current is going, the magnitude of your peak current is gonna increase. So your cathodic peak is gonna get more negative as you increase the scan rate. Um, if we're talking about the, the IUPAC convention, our normal convention that we do in, in our lab. Um, and the anodic current is gonna become more positive as you increase the scan rate. Well, why would this, why does this make sense? Um, well, our current is the amount of, uh, cur current is measured usually in amps, right? Which is coulombs per second. So it's the amount of charge, coulombs is number of charge per time. And so if we increase the scan rate, we're shortening the amount of time that we're scanning in our CV. So we've shortened the amount of time, but we have the same amount of charge being passed, um, the, the current will increase. So that's a very simple way to think about why um, as you increase your scan rate, you're spending less time while your current's gonna increase. Total charge usually will stay the same, okay? But your current's gonna increase. The other thing to note about this equation is that it doesn't have any units in this um, coefficient. This is a numerically derived um, equation, basically. So it's, it's a funky uh, thing here where it's you know not like the square root of three or some well-defined thing. This is numerically derived. Um, it's, it's basically, it's, it's, a, it's a differential equation. It comes from a differential equation that you can't solve explicitly. So you can only solve it numerically. Um, and you get this value, but the, the thing to notice here is that there aren't any units on this value, right? And obviously, um, anytime you see that, right, that means if you see an equation like this, if you were to memorize this equation, I don't suggest that you memorize it, but if you were to memorize this equation, you would need to also memorize the appropriate units on this constant. And I don't really like that Wikipedia doesn't um, tell you the units on this constant, um, in the formula, I, I think it, it should, or right below the formula, but it does tell you, hey, you, you have to use um, these, the, here are all the units of the, of the other um, parts of the, the equation, right? So 
Notice that some of these are a little are, are pretty standard, like centimeter squared for area, but concentration a lot of times in electrochemistry is actually moles per centimeter cubed. Okay. Um, centimeter cubed is a volume, but you might need to know the density to, to if you're dealing with a liquid. Um, well, this is milliliters, sorry, this is milliliters, so never mind about that. So this is moles per milliliter, right? So that's not a super common concentration, but in electrochemistry, those units work out a lot of times. Of course, the gas constant. Um, is in a, in a typical typical value. You can see here, uh, it's actually nice to give it in, 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 in different, uh, um, they, show, they show you the units here if your temperature is uh, equal to 25 degrees C. Okay, so the real important part about this, um, and I think this Wikipedia does a good job about this equation from my standpoint, where we will use it in our group, um, most frequently is um, this part. And I'm just gonna read it. It says, using the relationships defined by this equation, the diffusion coefficient, okay, can we turn to talk about that? But this is really the important part. Linear plots of IP versus the square root of the scan rate provide evidence for a chemically reversible redox process. process. So if you get a nice behavior here, you get a fit to this, you can then figure out, hey, this is a nicely reversible reaction. It's occurring you know, probably completely, it's completing with at a fast rate, okay, relatively fast rate. Even more importantly, though, what you can do um, is you can figure out n, which is nice, right? Number of electrons transferred. If you don't know what that is, but you know all the other things, there's other ways to determine the diffusion coefficient, for example. Concentration, you usually know because you're adding it in. Um, but even most importantly, it doesn't say here, but I like comparing. IP versus the square root of the scan rate versus another plot that has IP versus the scan rate, not the square root, but this is the scan rate. Um, and the reason why is because um, if it fits versus a square root, remember I was talking about square root always has to do with this diffusive component. So it tells you you have a species in solution. If you get a better fit of IP, and so maybe let's just go to some notes here. Um, if you get a better fit to IP versus the scan rate, okay. So let's let's write this down. So um, IP versus uh, scan rate, square root scan rate. If that's a good fit, that tells you um, reversible process in solution, right? diffusing from solution, I'll say. Diffusing, using that word diffusing, right? Uh, from solution. If you have um, IP versus just the scan rate, and that's a linear relationship, um, that is telling you that you have uh, a surface absorbed species. Surface absorbed species. Okay, in other words, there's no diffusion going on here. Okay. So why might that be the case? Well, you know, we're talking about, let's say you have some inert electrode, let's say it's gold or carbon, right? Let's just call it carbon. And you have ferrocene molecules, I'll abbreviate with FC. You know, those are getting oxidized, let's say, to make FC plus, ferrocenium, um, and then going back to the ferrocene, and that gets you a nice duct-shaped CV. Right, um, that's going to be a diffusion situation because they're in solution. So you 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 expect if it's a reversible, which ferrocene is a reversible process, redox process, you're going to get this relationship. However, um, if you have a different situation where you have carbon and you have a molecule, it could be ferrocene, okay, it could be something else, a redox active molecule that's attached to the surface some way, perhaps through a, a covalent linker or just absorbed, physiosorbed onto the surface. So maybe, you know, through some interaction, Van der Waals interaction, either case there, then you're gonna expect IP to go as the square root of the scan, the scan rate. Okay, so you just have a linear relationship and there's a direct relationship. Hey, if you, if you cut the time by half, you're gonna um, increase the current by, a factor of two, because the amount of charge, 
right? The amount of molecule on the surface is staying the same. So the total amount of charge stays the same. So just to show you an example of how this works in um, practice, I can show you one of our uh, papers. And so um, in this paper, we were looking at ferrocene and various ferrocene derivatives. Um, but the key one, I guess we just want to focus on is the black line, it's just ferrocene. So you get that nice duct shape. That's fine. This was using a glassy carbon electrode. Um, but then in the supporting information, we do just a very simple experiment, the simplest of the experiments that we do. And just want to focus on this panel A here. And so in panel A, what we have is we have the anodic peak current, okay, peak current density. So you can make these plots with the anodic peak current and the cathodic peak current. And ideally they would be the same. If it's a reversible process, you'd be getting the same relationship for both the anodic and the, and the cathodic. Um, but what you can see here is then the x-axis, um, the x-axis is scan rate with two different units. We took the scan rate, you have to be, um, you wanna be for this equation, you can go back to the Wikipedia, um, it doesn't really matter, but if you if you want to be, you know, thinking about using this um, constant, you want to be in volts per second, okay? Um, and so get your scan rate into volts per second, and then uh, plot it just normally. Plot your data normally, your scan rate versus your peak current density, your anodic peak current density that you just read off of your um, CV, okay? Now... There's a couple of different ways to do this. I'll talk about that in a second, but you're getting this from the CV. And then you're gonna make another plot of where you take the square root of the scan rate. So you can see this has now units of square root of V um, and, and inverse square root of seconds, right? It's the square root of volts per second. And you plot the two and, what you, and then you do a linear regression. And you can see that the R squared value for the square root um, is a much better fit than with the linear. And so this is good evidence that you have a, um, a diffusion control process. You have a reversible system. In this case we do, it's, it's, it's ferrocene and it's in solution. So it's diffusion controlled, okay? Um, you can see we also did this for the cathodic peak density. And again, we um, get a better fit, okay? 0 0.996 versus 0 0.987 for the square, the square root of the scan rate. So, you know, in most cases, you should come to the same conclusion whether or not you use the cathodic or the anodic peak current density. If you look at a CV like this, this, this was done on, um, like I said, on a carbon, and there's a, you know, how, what, what value do you choose? Um, let's see, so this was at 500 millivolt volts per second. So let's actually look at, you know, what value was chosen by um, Profula here, who was the, uh, the, the lead author on this paper. So um, at 0.5 volts per second, if we're thinking about the um, scan rate, okay, um, that would be just right here, a linear scan rate. So we're gonna be on the black curve. You can see we got, we got about 0.1. Um, current density, so 0.1 milliamps per centimeter squared. Um, and if you look at that, um, there it is, we're at 0.1. So he just took that value. That's um, that's an okay way to do it. Uh, um, a lot of times that will work. Sometimes if you have a lot of capacitive current, you might need to um, subtract off the capacitance if your capacitance is doing some funky things. So this is the capacitive current, okay? The non-Faraday process due to the changes in current in the uh, in the double air charge in the double air. This is your capacitive current. Okay, and this was just a direct readout, and um, you know he gets the result that sort of you expect for ferrocene. That's sort of a check. It's nice to check with uh, systems that you know should behave a certain way, and then he was able to go to more complicated systems and draw conclusions from that. So um, that's where randall sevchi equation is um, valuable um, in that you can come up with uh, a few different of these unknowns if you need them, like the number of electrons. In this case, if we plotted this and figured out the number of electrons, we should get n equals one. 
because ferrocene is just going to ferrocene plus. So it's a one electron process. But, you know, if we didn't know that that about ferrocene, we had an unknown molecule or something like that, we could figure that out if we knew all these other components, okay? But we weren't, we didn't even have to worry about all these things because all we knew is that, hey, all this stuff is going to be some constant, right? If all we do is vary the scan rate. So that's why we, we took advantage of this scan rate square root relationship to see if test if it's true to prove that it's diffusion controlled and reversible.